Tupuna Rugby Football Club Established 1919 The Blue and Black Army Ko te tia ki te rai Ko tā moko ki te whatu manawa Our tupuna Our people More than just rugby Puna Rugby Football Club, the Blue and Black Army, our purpose. We are descendants of warriors, unsurrendered rebels. He taua taukiuki, feta feta. Our community proud and staunch. Our whanau loyal and true. O rauringa tupuna, raurangi te haere akeni. We seek strength from our maunga, our moana, our marae. Mowa, who stands as a beacon of light for us. He who made his own path, who fought his own battles. To be a symbol of strength. Our moana, our sustenance. That which replenishes our ihi, our wana, our wairua. He rau hi i te tai, he rā poi i te tai. Ta whiti nui, the stronghold of our people, piri rākau. Wire mu tāmi hana. He kore au e tuahu, we are the unsurrendered. Paparoa, a place where our Māori whakapapa meets our French connections. A symbol of unity as a community embracing our diverse heritage. E ranga nei te tini tāngata. Pautu te rangi, the emergence of our warrior traits. Takurua, he who repelled the enemy, he who protected his home. Tu te reinga, our chieftain line. We of noble blood. Kingi tanga. Tino ranga tiratanga, mana motu hake. He tai ke 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 hunuku, he ranga, he aranga. Maramatanga, our fortress, the spiritual place of identity, the marae of whom we all belong, a place of memories past, the holder of hope for the future. Puna Rugby Football Club, the Blue and Black Army, the Hoko Fitua Te Puna e Taunei. Our people, our purpose, we march as one. Well. Uh, he piko piko ki runga, he ure roa ki raro, uh, ko au ko piri rākau, ko e rin koka tōku unga. quite emotional I think like just everything that's with, that we've been through the whole year um, the sacrifices that we made I was just um I was stoked there to run off on the sideline knowing that the boys had, had brought a home for all of us well the first emotion I felt was, was proud yeah. pride huge amount of pride huge amount of pride to finally deliver um, a, a championship to our club. Um, yeah, it was unreal just to see the support um, and you know all, all everyone's hard work going back years to just you know come to that point. So yeah, it was, it was really privileged and yeah, it was, it was unreal.
ko mau te maunga, ko taurunga te moana, ko ngāti rangi nui, me ngai te rangi ngā iwi, ko Poutu te rangi te marae, ko Daniel Schuster i tuakarai na rahu. Ko Wally Miltakungua, ko te whānau a tūhaka iri ora te hapu, ko Ngāti Parau te iwi. Kia ora, ko Anuru Takungua, ko Ngāti Rangi me Ngāti Rangi Nui Taku Iwi. I'm Andrew Batchum, Ngāti Huia, originally from Raglan. Kia ora, ko Vance Pippa Taku Ingoa, ko Piri Rākeu e Ngāti Rangi Nui. Kia ora, ko Te Ahe Toma Ahau, no Ngāti Rangi, ko Ngāti Rangi Taku Iwi, ko Mā Tātua Te Waka, Ko maua o te maunga, ko tauranga te moana. Ko hikurangi te maunga, ko waiopu te awa, ko Ngāti Parau te iwi, ko Harauta te waka, ko Hinerupe te marae, ko te whānau a Hinerupe, ko te whānau a Tūwhaka Iriora ngā hapu, ko Ken James Bud tōku ingoa. Think back to last year. How did you feel after losing that final against the Pukki, bro? Whew. Very, very disappointed, especially losing to, to those fellas. But mixed emotions, to be honest. Um, kind of just, you know, felt like you let your, your people down kind of there for a minute. But then again, you know, it was, it was actually good to be a part of the occasion. First time in a final, uh, first time in a semi-final um, last year, so... Yeah, um, probably more just happy to be uh, in a final as opposed to want, wanting to go out there and, uh, and win it. Um, and, you know, looking back on, on the game itself, um, Tapuke were, uh, they were, they were pretty sharp. Um, they were a well, um, you know, well oiled machine, really. They, yeah, they had some, some good players and they were playing some good rugby at the time. So, um, um, not to say that we, we couldn't have won that game. Um, we certainly deserve to be there. But to be honest, looking back, um, noticing the changes from this year and last year, almost felt like we, we were never in it. Eh? Sort of, you know, celebrating, making the semis and then winning that. Um, I think last year in the finals there, we, we were just happy to be there. Whereas um, this year, it, it, it changed. Chain to the game before the game. I sip champagne from the World Cup. Oh, yeah, I'm here to stir shit up. I pray on the hill in Brazil to Christ the Redeemer, but most kids worship us. I just warm it up. I'm almost ready. I think it was different this year. I come back to Tapuna um, for our first training. There's about 70 players. It's cops to dodge in the city of God to reach the goals of these soccer stars. It's records to break, medals to take, flags to wave, the city of Sars. Yeah, the first training this year blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. Uh, 65. I remember that number at the top of my head. We're, we're pretty hungry, eh? So a, a lot of the a lot of previous years, I think we've, we've turned up and sort of started from scratch again at the start of the year. Whereas I think this year, um, our baseline where we turned up at what we were training like first training, it was, it was a step up from where we'd previously been. It was a little bit nerve-wracking, to be honest, coming back. Um, it's heaps of energy, but there was always that in the back of your head, we got a package to deliver. Our first day, everyone was involved. Um, we had over 50 to 60 players here, um, all keen, ready to go. And um, it was the, the effort that the coaches gave in terms of what they delivered it as a presentation. Um, like Barry, AK, Lance, everyone, they all, they all turned up and they were ready to go. Oh, I think the biggest difference was uh, we sort of brought a bit more structure into it. Um, I mean, premieres and development, they were the pinnacle and where we had to sort of lead off from. And uh, them sort of helping us out to put the structure back into the game for the Bs, it really guided us, you know, making the finals. Makes rugby a lot easier instead of sort of running around. 
Why well, hateless chickens pretty much. <laughs> and we're back, straight back into planning. Wow. Straight back into planning. Uh, straight back into putting this vicious plan together to um, to go all the way um, in 2019. I suppose uh, I suppose it was the learnings that we had taken from the the previous couple of years in terms of what we wanted to achieve out of each training. So each training we had um, we had goals that we wanted to tick off, uh, whether it be uh, a set move that we wanted to to bank, or whether it be you know just a, a hard grind and get the boys hitting some pads, or, or just get some live contact going. Um, we set training goals this year. And, and that's what um, I think uh, made the difference. In previous years, um, you know, we were just happy to, to get a full squad to training and get through our team run and feel good about it. Uh, but this year we sort of broke things down and got a bit more detail out of each training. Uh, I have to take my hat off to the boys. Um, absolutely committed, absolutely committed. Um, you know, across our, our, our Premier and our development uh, squad, it was wicked. I mean, uh, the first training we had at the Bees, we had uh, most numbers I've seen in a while. I mean, um, yeah, it was a good good highlight. I mean, seeing the real blue and black boys turn up week in and week out. I mean, showing commitment. But I mean, uh, yeah, everyone was a bit broken after the first training, as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Still working off their Christmas pudding, though, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Our squads aren't two separate squads, they're one big squad and everyone trains to get a Premier jersey. Um, it's, yeah, the competition is, it was awesome, it was mean. But um, like I say, you put bloody 30 fellas out there smashing each other on a Tuesday, no other club in the Bay is doing that, <laughs> right up until finals week. So that was that's that's I mean that was a secret and that's how good the trainings were. There, there was energy. Everyone wanted to be there. There were guys that had come out of the woodwork, you know, guys that I didn't know whose fathers had played with the guys on that wall, and, you know, things like that. So it was like I was meeting a whole new family all over again. <laughs> um, you know, for me it was energising, but for for all those boys coming back together, I know, um, you know, we've got a really good mix. And you know, being a school teacher of your, your Taranga boys, your Aquinas boys, your Otomoto boys and, and, and my BC boys that they just seem to all come together and just grow um, which, was, which was really cool. There was one point where uh, Moo got taken out against uh, Arataki and Wally pulled the boys together and went look if that happens again this is how we deal with that you know and that was a quite a pivotal pivotal moment you know seeing you know, someone who's been here for a while, just take the reins and go, hey look, this is how we do things. But there was a lot of new players, a lot of new faces, but you could see that want, that drive, you know, everyone was here for a purpose. And, you know, we wanted to make, make history this year and train extra hard, you know, do those little things better, have a better attitude. Oh, I think the big difference was uh, we sort of brought a bit more structure into it. Um, I mean, premieres and development, they were the pinnacle and where we had to sort of lead off from. And uh, them sort of helping us out to put the structure back into the game for the Bs, it really guided us, you know, making the finals. Makes rugby a lot easier instead of sort of running around like headless chickens pretty much. <laughs> Okay, okay. What game during the round robin did you know your team was the real deal? Falling too fast to prepare for this. Tripping in the world could be dangerous. Everybody circling his vultures. Negative, nepotist. Everybody waiting for the fall of man. Everybody praying for the end of times. Everybody hoping they could be the one. I was born to run. I was born for this. Whip, whip, run me like a race horse. Pull me like a rip cord. Break me down and build me up. I
I, I, I kind of had a feeling that we had it right from the start in terms of I can't narrow it down to one individual game. I think during the season you'll find our games and every game you'll see us uh, play, we're, we're impressing. Um, we're turning heads, we're like, these boys are the real deal. Um, I guess, maybe thinking of it now, the game that I did find that we stood out was probably against Rangiuru. And um, we knew Rangiuru would, would um, turn up with their best team on their home ground. In fact, uh, there were a couple of boys that they had um, pulled in from the New Zealand Sevens who, you know, who registered Rangiuru boys, but uh, yeah, they sort of um, sort of shocked us a little bit uh, that they were on the on the team sheet that day and they were walking around really? with the team <laughs> and um, and uh, to, to our uh, to our boys' credit, they they just kept their head and um, yeah, they went out there and the first 20 minutes was um, was a bit testing, but um, we, you know we got some ascendancy and and the boys showed us what they could do uh, that day and that's the day that I. But I actually believe, yeah, we, you know, we're ready to roll. You know, we're ready to go, and it was the right time of the season to do that. Beating the Mount 109 0 said something, but going over and sinking the pirate ship 57 7 was was the one where everyone's going. You know, these are the only two real teams in it, and then suddenly they weren't. You know, and there was a real, you know, stake in the ground. You know, you're going to have to come to our place and beat us. And, and they couldn't do it. So that would have been, a, uh, you know, we, we really felt like right from the start, you know, it, it, was, it was ours to win. And then, yeah, that last game. Tipuki and Tipuki. Where's the big one? Roger, Roger, Roger there. Being the old fella in the team, you know, you run out there, you warm up with all these young fellas and they're giggling and mucking around and all sorts, but you chuck them on the field, they do the damage, which is, which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm one for a good joke too myself, but um, just the warm up and from the get go up at Tapuki, everyone was focused, you just did everything on the faces and I think I remember going up to Andy and I was going, ah, these fellas are serious, but look, no one's mucking around, the drills are on point and everything was just mean. Uh, first couple of trainings, um, it was hard just trying to get the guys there. Um, a few of them came up and uh, sat on top of the field. Um, just watching, watching. Uh, took it upon myself to go up there and uh, knock on the windows and ask them the question. Uh, if you're going to be down here, get out of your car, come over the field and let's start training. Uh, once the boys started uh, coming along and they getting involved, uh, just, just trying to sell them my vision of where we wanted to be for 2019, our centenary year. Um, uh, it took a while for them to buy in. As soon as they did start, I uh, started to buy in. Uh, we, we actually started to turn up the trainings and then talking to a few of them, it was, um, it was a first in many years. Uh, Tuesday and a Thursday training actually. Um, but, but it was exciting times. Um, the guys were real, real keen. They by about our fourth training, you could see the, the difference in, in the, the guys. They, just their punctuality and their keenness to be there for each other. Uh, it started to really show. Uh, yeah, and I think that was the, the making of the start of our season, really. Describe that famous grit and drop goal. <laughs> uh, play. What were your emotions like at that point in time? You were on the field uh, mm. in those last dying minutes. Yeah, I was, and I, I honestly thought it was game over when they scored that try. And I was, I had to ask the ref. I asked him how many to how much time left, and um, Jesus, he he said a few more minutes left, and I was like. That's all we need. So all I told the boys was, we get this kickoff, 
and we played with us. And then, um, so, as you seen, <laughs> we got the kickoff. It was like, it was like, uh, man, unbelievable, this, the scene that we just created in terms of it was a do or die moment and the boys turned up. I mean, you look at that play, you could put it on, I've played it so many times over and over again. And I think you couldn't get any better uh, quality rugby than that. I mean, we got the, we got the ball back. We picked and go, we, we played phases, we built phases until the moment was right. And um, yeah, <laughs> Reese didn't want the moment, but I told him, you're having this moment. And then he um, was just, man. The guy here for me was the one who conducted that whole thing. Um, he ran up to the ref, he wanted to know how much time was left. And then um, you know, he was pushing and pulling people around and he told Reese to get in that pocket and threw him that pass and then Reese um, banged it over. So the name Reese McDonald's gonna live on forever <laughs> um, in our history, but uh, how did I feel when that ball went through the post? Oh, ecstatic. Um, I was an emotional wreck, really. Within that whole five minutes, I had experienced probably every emotion you can feel. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, euphoria. Uh, <laughs> what else can I say? It yeah. was the moment yeah. that um, really uh, clinched it for us um, and put us into a final, obviously. But I think mm -hmm. I expended so much emotion in that moment that um, leading into the final and, and the finals mm. week I didn't really have <laughs> have much left yeah, yeah. so it was all gone after that drop goal but yeah, um, yeah that's that's how it all went down and mm. I think everyone's watched it a million times uh, but uh, yeah probably um, the most historic play um, well certainly in, in my lifetime Can you tell me a little about this army thing? Well, I believe this army theme's been around Tapuna for a while, back when VK and them were playing. Like I think AK and them were saying his favourite line was March on or Soldier on, brothers. Hey, Soldier on. So I guess when, uh, when I took over, I just really wanted to give that another boost and, and bring it to life and make it you know, a real big part of who we are. No, he said, yeah, this army theme's been around to point of for a while. Like, I remember when I first started playing senior rugby with yourself and all, it was like, you know, putting soldier on, brothers. Bloody hard on our goal line and someone yelling soldier on. So, yeah, it's definitely been around for a while. You know, we have things like an oath, like the army does, you know. Mm. Um, we have a code of conduct, just like the army. So, you know, being courageous. Uh, making sacrifices and being a good comrade, comradeship. So those three are the cornerstones to our code of conduct and how we, um, how we, how we uh, wanted to go about our business. Have those three things and um, yeah, it's sort of gelled together quite nicely. And um, uh, yeah, so this whole blue and black army thing is um, it's it's been a uh, you know it's been. An awesome thing to see, and it's part of our culture, and who we are as uh, not only as a club but as, as people. Who are as they lift the trophy and then there's the other teams that aren't quite so pleased but they'll be looking ahead to something better next year. We go to Tapuna now.
Paramatanga Park, where Tapuna, in their 100th year, are here to play in their final against Tauranga Sports. Just what you would expect from grassroots rugby. Sausage sizzles and kids for the thousands. Aiden, five years ago you set a goal to do something special in the 100th year and here we are. Yeah, well, here we are. 2019, uh, finals day and um, yeah, it's been a journey. You know, we, we set out as a club to get into, you know, a premiership final and, and, and even our development team today and our senior reserves uh, two weeks ago. It's been, a, it's been a hell of a ride. What is up with the resurgence of Tapuna rugby? Oh look, we just love our rugby out here. Um, you know, it's, 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 it makes our community tick, it makes our people happy, and um, you know, it gives us uh, an opportunity to all come together and um, and bond together for something positive. Um, what is your plan of attack out there? Oh look, all year we try and give the ball some air and um, and, and play some exciting rugby out on the edges. So you know, nothing's going to change today for us. Um, uh, this is what our people want to see, um, and, and this is the brand of rugby that we like to play. So uh, yeah, we we'll throw the ball around, and, and you know it's just our privilege and honour to be here to um, you know, to provide for our people today. And number nine, Jordan Stone, that is the back line to the Ford for Tehuna. And number eight, Gordy Lloyd, Mitch Holton, and number seven, number six, Captain Caden Hunt. Number five, Justin Zangster. Number four, Troy Weber. Colour, big day. Yeah, great day. Uh, plenty of people here, sun's out, so it should be good. How's your team gone this year? Um, we've had some ups and downs. Um, We've got a real young crew, uh, started pretty slow, but uh, we got better each week and that's probably the reason why we're here. And uh, the coach of the other team, you and uh, Aiden used to play in the Stevens team? Yeah, yeah a, few, a few years ago and that, so no, it's good to uh, come up against him today. He's, um, last five years I've really built for this year, 100 years, so um, no, he's done an awesome job out here. Obviously you're going to try and spool that part. Yeah, we hope so. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's a fantastic day for rugby. It's an awesome occasion. These boys will love running around in a crowd like this. You know, it's, you know they reckon 4,000 here, so that's pretty cool. And finally, uh, what is the game plan? Uh, well, for us to have a win today, we've got to play as a team. We're not a, uh, we haven't got a few big individual stars, so if we can uh, string it together as a team and hang in there, we should be all right. It was quite emotional, I think. Like, just everything that's a, that we've been through the whole year, um, the sacrifices that we've made.
final. Um, it is to you, the better seeds with, with our people behind us.
was myself was happiness. Happiness for, for everyone, um, everyone. And it goes back to those people I've just mentioned, but a couple of people um, I was so happy for was um, uh, Uncle Tommy and, mm. and his um, tears of joy that um, he shared with us all. Um, Auntie Reen, Auntie oh, Reen has been, oh. um, you know, she's such a, um, um, a lovely lady who done her hard yards in this club and um, mm. uh, me and Auntie Reen share a special bond because, um, you know, when uh, Uncle Fred was, uh, was in his last days, um, he, actually, he actually rung up for me. Um, when I was uh, up at home, and I was only a young fella, I was only a teenager, but he he rang up for me, and he wanted wanted me to go up and see him. And me and my dad went up, and we saw him, and he just held on to my hand and just squeezed it, and sort of looked at me and said, "You know, oh, you God. know your duty. You know, take our club, and, you know, take them to the top." To be honest, the first first person I thought of was uh, Auntie Donna. Uh, before we left, she put she put a lot of pressure on us. I wouldn't say put a lot of pressure on us, but she um, she she kept telling me, "Boy, the script has been written. We we will win." And there was a lot of pressure pressure leaving the club, knowing that um, you know, we were we were going to lead the way for the rest of our club. Uh, and yeah, she was the first person I thought of. I was uh, really, really happy for it, uh, for all our boys, you know, just that coming back from a 22 mil and, and winning in that last final whistle was, uh, it was unbelievable, it was unbelievable, but we set a precedence that afternoon for the rest of our club that um, if we could do it, 22 mil done at half time, there's no reason why the rest of our teams could, could win as well. I was just... Um I was stoked to run off on the sideline knowing that the boys had, had brought a home for all of us. You know, one of the biggest sort of memories from that is seeing, you know, Matua Tami walking on with tears in his eyes and all the all the kids, all the all the crow and kuya that came on uh, to celebrate with us, you know, at that at that final whistle. Um, yeah, it was unreal just to see the support um, and you know all all everyone's hard work. Going back years, it just you know come to that point. So yeah, I was, I was really privileged, and yeah, I was with kid. It was unreal. Oh, just having everyone that's actually been from Tupuna play JMC up through the grades. I think there was only two players that didn't actually originally from um, the JMC. So everyone knows um, once you put that jersey on, you know you're out there. You're out there to give it 100%. Um, yeah, everyone's been through the grades together. Even we've had a few Colts boys, even boys playing premiers that are still there. But I mean, um, yeah, that jersey means a lot. So. Team culture and the buy-in that we had through, from players um, and right through to coaches as well. Right from the start, like I said, at our first ever trainings, the coaches turned up, they were ready to go, they were prepared, they had presentations ready to go, and I think that just flowed on to the boys and the expectations of the boys as well. The future of this club, bro, I think, is looking bright, it's looking mean. Like, right through what Sean and them are doing with the JMC and, and coming through, especially this year, I'm just hoping all these fellas stick around, which I think they will. I think they really, like, speak from the heart when they say they really love and really enjoy coming here. You know, it's, it's the want, those guys wanting to come back you know, from school or, 
from where, wherever they've been, whether it's university or whatever, and come home and play at home. And there's something about putting that jersey on. And when Caden explained what the shoulders and the front and the, and the back of that jersey means, you know, you could, you could feel the hair on your, your arm standing up and you could see the boys going, oh, I can't wait to get that jersey on. And, you know, there's, there's younger guys now who are going, I can't wait to be the next, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at, you know, guys in the Tongan team pulling a salute with a, with a Tapuna headgear or guys in the, the King's College first 15 doing the same thing or, you know, it's, I, I, again, I, I think there's something here, something special here about um, coming home and playing for your family. I know when I was a kid, you know, the, the club I played for in Hamilton was blue and black. You know, and to know I only live, you know, five minutes down the road, to see my son put on blue and black, my, my mum was bawling her eyes out. But I think the, the, the fact that they want to, you know, um, you know, from a coaching perspective, you can lead a horse to water, but it doesn't mean it's gonna, it's gonna drink it. You know, I could have all this talent, but if they don't want to get on the field and play, then, you know, and I think in, in the last, Three years we've won four or five games by 100 points, you know, and that comes from it, it comes from a bit of training, it comes from a bit of skill, it comes from a bit of hard work, but it, it also comes from the, the want, the, the desire to be out there and, and do it for your for your family and, and and your friends and your community around you. Well, I think a lot of the success we've been having um, is based on. You know, all the all the oldies and all the people behind the scenes doing all the work. So like the the committee. All the all the whānau around Te Puna just helping out to to maintain the club and do all the mahi around here. So I think if you know our generation can you know carry that on throughout the years and, and you know get a, get heaps of, heaps more life members and whatnot, and we, we'll just um, hopefully we'll just keep that going, keep that rolling. Uh, so these these young kids running around can you know sort of have what we've we've had, and these young fellas coming through will be will be a ways I think. think is the dark horse player um, in your team? Um, who, who do you think can go and progress in rugby? Well that's a toughie, that's a tough one. Um, I suppose as, as, as a coach I, I probably see, uh, I see the boys in, in, in all their different lights. Um, and just sitting here thinking about it now, there's you know there's there's a lot of names I could actually mention because um, I think um, given a chance, I think these boys could actually go on and, and, and really produce the goods and, and forge a career out of playing rugby. Uh, but I suppose if I have to nail down one, um, um, you know, I think I think it has to be uh, our player of the year this year, uh, Tana Tuakaraina.
he's he's unreal. He's the man on attack and D. But um, although he's he can rip a back line up, um, it seems like he's he's not the most flashiest player, but he he does his job really really well. Um, and I think yeah, all the boys noticed, which is which is why he took away the player of the year this year. But yeah, he's he's the man. He's the man. He's got the right attitude and all that as well. So I think um, yeah. He'll be able to crack it. The talent that's coming out at this club at the moment is insane. I mean, you got the likes of um, Geordie, who was who uh, obviously stepped it up this year, and it was full gratitude to him that he got the starts that he need, that he wanted, and um, he deserved it right through the whole season. Uh, it kept me out of play, so it was full gratitude to him. Um, I think he's a, he's a dark horse that I think that um, stepped it up for the club this year and without him I don't think we would have got uh, as close as we did or as far as we did this year. Young Josh Kingsbury, he was a bloody weapon eh? He was unreal actually. I mean, he didn't play last year because he had too many concussions or whatever but he, could, he knew when he wasn't on the field, he was like it needed a game break because we didn't have Harry O'Day this year. He sort of filled that void of um, not having Harry O'Day. But um, yeah, I'd say Joshi, um, or Tapurua, he's um, he puts his head in the right spaces and does a bit of training. He'd be a bloody unstoppable. That boy, he's huge, fast, strong. So he definitely go a long way, old ups. Tapurua, just on the fact that. Yeah, he, he could come on and he'd be a game changer. You know, he, he'd either score a try or he'd you know, give a try to somebody else. He could play eight, he could play 13, but it just depended on how much he wanted it on the day. To be honest, bro, I, I don't know what our future holds for us. Um, there's just so much going on in the world now. You know, with uh, technology, social media, you know, family life, um, work commitments, just, just general commitments, you know, that they've got them more and more. Um, I'm sort of noticing our younger, younger players are um, probably not excited as they as we were when we were younger to be a part of uh, to be a part of this club so now it's going to be a lot of hard work for some of us and probably the, the next generation under us to to ensure that our, our club stays alive uh, not just for our players but for our community you know, for our hapu. I definitely think we, we will be strong you know I know a few players leaving but I think we'll still be strong, you know. I definitely think we'll be up there next year, top four, you know. Hopefully we can do the job then. But we'll definitely be strong. I know there'll be a lot of players coming through. Our JMC is real strong. I know Sean Letts guiding them through the, through the ranks. So, mm. I mean, you know, players go, but I'm sure there'll be some players that will come through and be our, be our TI here's our cadence kind of thing, you know, our, our future is bright and I don't think it's ever going to go down from here, you know, I think it just took that one shove. The infrastructure's there, the talent's there, it's just how we as a club manage their talent and look after it and you've seen that talent come through, you know, you've, you've, you've seen that the cadence and the riwis and the, you know, and the TI here's, you know, come all the way through this club, you've, you know, for me, it's it's been the Lukes, it's the Maxes, it's the, you know, those guys like that. Um, you know, and, and continuing to see those guys come through. So I've got no doubt that this, you know, this club's in good good hands. Uh, can I just quickly say thank you to the um, to the Tupuna Rugby Football Club committee. Uh, thank you for all your hard work that you've um, put in behind the scenes. Um, it's it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge task, it's a thankless job, um, so to our committee I really thank you for, uh, for what you've done um, in the background to, to keep our club ticking over year after year so the boys can just go out there and do their thing on the field. 
Um, I also want to thank all our sponsors for, um, for their generosity and just lastly to, to all our families, um, of all the boys, uh, of all the management. Thank you all for, um, you know, for the sacrifices that you've made. And uh, from me to you, salute. Jaro uh, just on behalf of all the players here at uh, the Tupuna Rugby Club, we'd like to thank all our supporters who have come out to support us throughout the year. Uh, we couldn't have done any of this uh, without you, so we salute you. Brothers, we salute!